Thank you for that reminder to unmute. That's my feeling in you, in Zoom. This is the story of my mother's Afghan. Long ago, my husband left me with two little boys to raise, and my father became bedfast in his 12-year journey from the strongest man in the world to death by Parkinson's. My father died the day of my graduation with that graduate degree so I could take my boys, find a job, and raise them. It was a hard year and a hard week. I went back to visit my mom and help her because we were both kind of in the same boat. We were both going to move and we needed to sort things out and clear things up. So I went back to help mom and she shoved a box over to me and she said, now those are your dad's things, you go through those. And I said, okay. And I said, now daddy named me, didn't he? She said, yes, your father was right there the minute you were born and he said, we're going to call her Patricia Rose, and I still don't know why he named you such a thing, anything that had to do with patients, because you have never had any. And I said, okay, and I had kind of wondered about my namesake. Now I was going through that box, and about halfway down, I found a photograph face down, about five by seven, and it was kind of crinkly and dirty, you know, looked really old. And on the back, it said, Pat and Peggy, 1929. And I thought, this has got to be my namesake. So I said once more to my mom, these are all dad's things. She said, yes, they are. And daddy named me. Yes, he did. I turned that photograph over. It was two old bulldogs. And I immediately remembered all the stories my dad told about his favorite dog, that bulldog, Pat, and how that dog just followed him everywhere. And one day, lightning hit a tree down in the pasture, and it was leaning way out at a crazy angle. So all the kids ran up that tree and that bulldog ran right up there with them. And daddy said they liked to never got that bulldog down again. So I laughed out loud and I told mom what I was laughing about. And she laughed too, to think maybe, maybe I had found my namesake. As we moved on, now mom shoved a suitcase over to me and she said, See if that's something you can use in those programs you do at the library or with your puppets. And I said, okay, and I opened it up. It was full of yarn. That was from the bicentennial year when one grandma said to all the grandchildren, she would make each one of them a red, white, and blue Afghan. Well, my mother wasn't about to be left out. So she said to all the grandchildren, she would make each one of them an Afghan in whatever colors they chose. So there was a little uh, competition there and those kids all came out with two beautiful Afghans. Now mom said she would make one for each of the seven of us. But you know, we were busy. We didn't choose the colors and the styles and everything right away. So this suitcase full of yarn was what she had left. And I looked at that and I said, you know, mom, what with us being kind of left over as a widow and a divorcee, I need to know leftovers are worth something. Make my Afghan use what you have. Over the next few weeks, she made my afghan. I loved it so I wore it as much as possible. I thought about putting buttons on it and wearing it even more. But then 
it got kind of dirty, so I had to wash it. I threw it in the washing machine in the clothes dryer. And you know, when I took it out, um, I realized that it wasn't even all the same kind of yarn. See, some of it shrank up kind of funny. The afghan isn't perfect. It is, however, warm and bright and lovely. My mother wasn't perfect, neither am I, neither are you. But she was warm and bright and lovely. And so am I. And so are you. Except, of course, for those of you who are warm and bright and handsome. It's my mother's afghan. I snuggle into it still. <laughs>